Martin. Today we're going to do some grafting and uh, I thought what I'd do is go over the grafting supplies real quick. Um, obviously we need plants. Um, so we have ideally a root stock. I'm going to keep my root stock here on my left and where you put all your, your plants and your, your supplies is real important in grafting because you never want to confuse things. So I have a couple of uh, four packs here of uh, a root stock. These are a little bit bigger than I'd like them to be for grafting, but this is a demonstration and uh, this is the best we could do today. And then on my right, I have my cyan or the top portion. This is the fruiting variety that I like. And it's real important never to confuse those two. Some other basic supplies. I need a razor blade to make my cut. Just a straight edge razor. You can buy this at a, any drug store. Then I have my grafting clips, and I like to have several sizes of grafting clips. These are, what I have in my hand are silicon grafting clips, 1.5 millimeter and 2.0 millimeter diameter. These are a couple of the smaller sizes. These plants are a little bit bigger today. I'm guessing I'm gonna be using a couple of these clothespin, clothespin style grafting clips which need to be snug around the stem of my grafted plant. So this is one thing you can do before you start actually grafting is check and see which of these clips is best going to fit the diameter of that stem. Um, and like I said, it looks like today we're going to be going with our largest size, this orange one. A few other important supplies. Water, because when I get done grafting the plant, I want to reduce any stress on it by misting it real quick. And it's also important to be as hygienic as possible, keep things clean. So I have some alcohol just to sanitize my blades or any other piece of equipment I want to keep clean during this process. Also very important, you never want to confuse these two bottles. This is awfully hard if you spray it directly on plants, right? So water and alcohol not to be confused. Some people like to use gloves when they do this. I don't like to use them, so I'm not going to. But another piece of equipment, some paper towels just to keep things clean. So the important part of grafting is making sure that we have stem diameters that match up as close as possible between the rootstock and the scion. So a lot of times what I do is look in among my root stocks and choose one that I'm comfortable with for its stem diameter. And I like this one here, so I'm gonna take this out. And with my clean razor blade now, I'm just gonna give myself some working room. I'm gonna take off that lower leaf, that lower leaf, that lower leaf. And since this is my root stock, I really don't need any of the top portion. So I'm going to take off everything there. And you'll notice I let all of those leaves and the growing point of my root stock fall on the floor. Makes a bit of a mess, but then I know for sure I'm never going to confuse the growing point of my root stock with the growing point of my scion. Now I look now at my scions, and I try to find one with a similar diameter. I think I like this one. And here's another trick. Since I'm not going to use the roots of this plant, I can get rid of those too. Let those fall to the floor. And I'm also going to do a little bit of a cleanup job here. I don't need these leaves. They'll make the plant too top heavy, so I take those off so I can see what I'm doing. And here's a nice trick is I lay the cyan down on my cutting surface parallel to the root stock. And now what I can do is adjust the root stock or the cyan up or down until I feel like the diameter match between them is very good. And then I make a single cut one downward cut like this on about a 45 degree angle 
it doesn't have to be extremely precise that angle, but by making one cut across both stems, I know that the cut is going to be true across both plants. So I'm going to make my cut now. And I'm left with a rootstock and a scion that hopefully are going to match up just perfect. Take my clip. And there I have my new plant. It's ready to go into the healing chamber at this point. In the meantime, what I might do just to keep it alive is mist it, a little bit of water to re reduce the transpiration stress on the new plant. From here, it's gonna go into a healing chamber. All right, now we're going into another greenhouse where we have our healing chamber. So here's our grafted plants. I wanna put them into my healing chamber now. I wanna mist them one more time before they go in there. They'll have plenty of mist when they're inside there, but just wanna reduce any stress I can on them. Now it's important not to jostle these too much so that we don't uh, disrupt that graft union. I'm gonna mist them gently here and put them into my healing chamber. In here, they're going to have 100% relative humidity. Our temperature is somewhere around 75 to 80 degrees, very constant. And I want three days of total darkness. Now, what we're doing today is just for demonstration. But in reality, what we would like is a system that's as efficient as possible so that we go from a grafted seedling to one that's totally viable in as short a time as possible so that we don't extend the transplant production system by too many weeks. Mm -hmm.